Hi everybody, welcome to Look, Live, and Be Better on Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon, and today is the last day, so sad, uh, for this um, format of the show. And so today we're going to do kind of a special, it's an Ask Me Anything Wednesday, or depending on when you watch it, this could be Thursday or Friday, but it is Ask Me Anything Wednesday night, and I've got a lot of questions here from uh, the viewers uh, of the show that I'd like to go over. Uh, I will be also following on Facebook. So if you do have questions that you'd like to ask live, I'm going to do my best to try to answer those as well. Um, but today we're going to answer a lot of different questions that you may have on plastic surgery, on skin care, on diet, on health. Ask anything, even if you're interested in something that doesn't have to do with plastic surgery, but has to do with me being a doctor, being a plastic surgeon. Ask me anything. I'll do my best to answer. So first question that we have today is, I'm a 62 year old woman and have scheduled a lower facelift. I want to make sure that my skin looks its best to help obtain the best outcome possible. Also, are fat injections that fill out the face permanent? Um, so best thing to do if you're thinking about having plastic surgery, especially a facelift, uh, make sure that you see your doctor, get cleared for surgery, okay? Usually anybody over the age of 40, I make sure that we get them cleared by their physician or, or by a physician that we refer them to uh, to make sure that they're safe to have surgery. They don't have issues with anemia, bleeding issues, uh, risk of blood clotting, heart issues, all that type of stuff. Uh, as far as the fat injections, fat injections are actually permanent. So the question is not so much are fat injections permanent, but how much of the fat is permanent? And that's a big question. So when we look at studies, uh, it can be anywhere from 20% of the fat that stays, even 10, as little as 10%, up to 50 to 70% that can stay. And it all depends on multiple factors, how the fat is injected and the area that's injected. Uh, what, what I find is that the areas of the face that move the most, like let's say the lips, have the least amount of fat that stays than other parts of the face like the cheeks. So I'll tell my patients on average, maybe 30 to 50% of the fat that we inject into the cheeks will stay long term, whereas in the lips it's maybe more like 10 or 20%. Now that also depends on the type of patient. There are those people whose body is just supercharged to get rid of fat. And so if um, you put any fat in their body, their body will get rid of it. Those are the patients that unfortunately need the fat the most. Uh, there are other people that unfortunately their body likes to hold on to their fat. And so they're the ones that usually will have the better take of the fat, um, but they also the ones, are also the ones potentially that don't need it as much. Uh, second question from this person also uh, is, I have crow's feet around the eyes and the L lines between the brows. Can I use Botox before the surgery or is it best to do it after the surgery? Uh, so Botox in the face, whether you're talking about the crow's feet or the frown lines, the, the um, um, 11 sign that we call it, that can, be do, that can be done either before or after surgery. Because uh, a facelift doesn't treat those areas, you can really do it whenever it's convenient for you. Okay, so uh, once again, go on the... Um, Go on Facebook, ask me some questions. I'll try to answer those live as well. I've got a ton to go through here too. Um, okay, Dr. Yoon, can you please discuss jowl liposuction? How long is a downtime and are there any contraindications to this procedure? So the jowls are the, uh, the little pockets of fat that we develop right here and here as we get older. And it seems like such a simple thing to just liposuction those jowls away, doesn't it? No big deal. Or the new treatment now is Kybella. Kybella is an FDA approved injectable that can very effectively melt fat. Well, I would not recommend doing Kybella or doing, doing liposuction to the jowl. And the main reason why is that there is a branch of the facial nerve that goes underneath your jawline, and then right around the location of the jowl, it comes up to your lower lip. And if you liposuction too aggressively, in that jowl area, or if you inject Kybella into the jowl, you can damage that nerve and you get a crooked smile. Okay, and technically it doesn't drop. It, you, it is a nerve that allows you to drop your mouth and you won't be able to. 
And so the affected side where the nerve is out actually is a part of the face of the, of the lip that doesn't drop. So I don't recommend jowl liposuction. Um, I don't recommend Kybella to that area. Unfortunately, the only way to really effectively reduce that jowl uh, and to get rid of that fat is to do it under direct visualization, which means that you actually have to do a facelift. You see that, that fat there and you can gently liposuction it then, avoiding those nerves. So jowl liposuction, not a good idea. All right, so what else have we got? Let's uh, go into a non-surgical question. Um, here we go. Uh, is there a difference between using the Clarisonic or the Foreo for facial cleansing? Do the less expensive versions of these work just as well? So uh, Clarisonic is, an, uh, is a device that has a uh, rotatable head on it. You know, I've got, you know, if, if you've seen my show, The Age Fix, um, let me see if I can grab one of these here. Uh, you may have seen my show, The Age Fix, on PBS. This is a copy of that beauty brush. This is a, a different type of version of something similar to the Clarisonic. And what it basically does is it has a rotating head that allows you to cleanse, it allows you to exfoliate, um, and a very, very useful product. So I encourage you, if you don't have one, uh, it is definitely a good um, piece of kind of a beauty device that can really help you uh, with cleansing your skin, with getting rid of makeup, and it can also help you do it a few times a week to exfoliate your skin. Well, should you just buy a less expensive one? There are companies like Neutrogena that makes it, a lot of companies that make them now. And you know, my recommendation is, is if you can afford a Clarisonic, a more expensive device uh, like that, I would recommend kind of splurging for that. They have multiple different heads uh, with that device. Those heads are fairly easily purchased and, and the device is quite durable. Uh, that, that you do pay for quality. However, if budget is definitely an issue for you and to buy a Clarisonic would be quite difficult, then definitely would encourage you, go for the less expensive ones like the Neutrogena Wave. Um, it's gonna cost you a lot less money. The negative of those products though is you may not quite have the variety of the heads that you can use uh, for uh, different parts of your face or your body. This is kind of, this is a little, a corksicle, this is my wife's, that's why it's nice and pink. If you ever uh, are looking for something that will keep your drink hot or very cold for hours, pick up one of those. Okay, um, another question here. Um, okay, I have two annoying skin tags, one on each side of my neck, and I've been playing and pulling on them that is getting to the point where I just want to cut them off. Is there anything over the counter that I can use to get rid of skin tags? Unfortunately, I don't know of anything that you can use, a cream or some type of a device that you can use over the counter. Um, skin tags basically are these little tags of skin that we develop uh, typically as we get older. And quite often these tags are in areas where your skin will rub together. So people quite often get them in their neck. They can get them underneath the breasts, underneath the folds of the tummy as well. Uh, the best treatment for it would be either to have a, a doctor like a dermatologist or a family doc or even a plastic surgeon remove those for you by cutting them off. Some dermatologists will freeze them for you. That might be a little easier and less bloody. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know of any ways that you can get rid of skin tags um, by just uh, a cream or something like that. If it's a big enough skin tag, technically you could take a, a piece of dental floss, tie it around the base of it real tight, that will cut the blood supply off, and within a couple days, that skin tag will probably fall right off. So if you don't have access to a doctor and it's a big enough skin tag, you can try that, um, but any sign of infection or anything like that, you definitely wanna see a doc. All right, um, real quick, uh, if you sh uh, comment and share, if you share and comment this video, once again, we've got some great giveaways. I'm gonna still answer more questions here today, uh, but we're gonna give away a couple of cool things. So. Uh, if you're looking for some new skincare products, uh, for the lucky for three lucky people who share the video and they comment, we're going to give a full-size Foma Cleanse, which is a gentle foaming cleanser combined with Brightnex. This is from one of my favorite skincare companies, medical grade skincare company, ZO Medical. The Brightnex basically is a combination of retinol with mild skin lighteners. So it's, it's kind of an all-in-one anti-aging cream. I will warn you that the Brightnex is quite aggressive. So if you've got thin skin or sensitive skin, let me know because I don't want to send it to you.
because it, it may, you may not tolerate that well. If you've got more oily skin or thicker skin, hardier skin, this could be a great treatment for you. And we'll throw that in to a nice uh, kind of makeup skincare bag that you can take. We have three groups of these. Uh, the total value of this is over is about $169 value for each for the combination. So we've got three of these. If you comment and if you share and let me know that you've comment, let me know that you've shared. We've also got three groups of my book, The Age Fix, and we'll throw in a cell phone charger. Okay, so three lucky people will get a combination of my book with the cell phone charger. Uh, share and comment and we will send those to you. I uh, also want to let you know, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, that this is the last of its type of broadcast, probably for a while. Next week we're going to change format a little bit. And next week we're going to switch to a podcast type of format. It will still be on Facebook Live. For one week we're going to um, have a different time, so it will be next Thursday, February 9th at 9 p.m., uh, Eastern Time and 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, I'm going to change it. You know, instead of it being me sitting here talking to you, I will actually be interviewing uh, some very prominent uh, people in the medical field, plastic surgeons, dermatologists, health experts, um, nutritionists, people who are key opinion leaders in beauty and health and looking and feeling better. Uh, we're going to be talking next week to a good friend of mine, you may have heard of her, Dr. Pimple Popper. Now, she is very famous, probably the most famous dermatologist in the country right now. You may have seen her disgusting videos online on YouTube. She's got millions of followers, and we're going to get behind uh, the phenomenon uh, of Dr. Pimple Popper and really learn about what's going on with her and how this came to be. Uh, in future broadcasts of Look, Live, and Be Better, we will once again be showing it live on Facebook uh, but also in podcast format, so you can listen to the longer versions that we're going to have uh, in your car while you're working at home. Uh, and we're going to be covering lots of different things. We'll be covering the miracle mindset. We'll be covering plastic surgery of the private parts. Uh, we'll be talking about the hormone secret. We'll be talking about bone broth and ways to lose weight and feel better and improve your health. We'll talk about Beverly Hills lunchtime cosmetic procedures, and we'll cover essential oils. If you've wondered what is the deal with essential oils, we'll dive deep into all of these types of things over the next couple of weeks to couple of months. Uh, I'll go back over that uh, again here in just a few minutes. Let's answer some more questions. Uh, let's go online here. I know we've got a lot of comments here. Um, so let me turn my volume down here. Okay. Let me see if I can pull this up here. All right. Uh, fortunately, it's not working that well for me. Let me switch this up. And we will look at some of these other comments. Okay. Well, while I bring this up, um, okay. One question that I have is, how do you know when it's time for surgery to correct sagging and aging skin? I'm 62 years old. And I've had for the past three years multiple laser treatments ranging from Genesis to Excel. I've had three radio frequency treatments for skin tightening. I've had Botox and I've had fillers. Uh, and how, what should I do to treat my aging? All right, so um, good question. And uh, so you've had a lot of treatments already. It sounds like you spent probably a ton of money uh, doing these treatments. So what can you do uh, or when do you decide when it's time to actually go under the knife? Um, the simple question, the simple answer basically is, is if you've had these non-surgical cosmetic treatments and you're not getting the results you're looking for, then that's when potentially the time for surgery um, is nigh. Now, surgery is not the be-all end-all for everything, okay? And if you're looking at facial aging, the, the things that you really need surgery to treat that aren't really treated well with anything else is saggy skin of the upper eyelids, severe puffiness or bags under the eyes, and drooping of the skin of the neck. Now, in this person's question really is sagging aging skin, so I'm assuming we're talking about the lower face of the neck, the jowls, um, uh, saggy neck skin. So if that's the case, uh, then uh, really what I recommend is, first of all, you wanna look at the cost, okay? And just for example, if a face of costs about $10,000, okay? This is what I'll tell my patients, is the time for you to have a facelift is when you hate the appearance of your neck and your, and your jowls so much that you will 
go under the knife, undergo a three to four hour operation, get permanent scars around the ears and probably a scar down here, um, have one to two weeks of downtime and spend all of that money. And to think of doing that makes you excited then maybe the time is right for a facelift. So I'll repeat, when you hate this enough, okay, that you will spend thousands of dollars, whether it's $10,000 or more, go under the knife, have a week or two of recovery, have permanent scars with the potential risks that go along with that, and that gets you excited, then maybe the time is right to consider a facelift. So I hope I answered that for you. Um, hey, Amy, can I see your phone? Can you have, because on my iPad, it's not showing all of the comments on it. But if you can give that to me, maybe I can help answer some live questions here too. Uh, another question that I have is, what do you do with stretch marks after delivering a child? So this is a great question. Um, is there any way to get rid of stretch marks without having surgery? And the simple answer to that question is, unfortunately, no. It's not possible to get rid of stretch marks without having surgery. Uh, there are creams that um, try to claim to get rid of stretch marks. There was one maybe 10, 12 years ago, it's called Strivectin that was actually marketed as for stretch marks. I have not seen, seen any type of topical treatment that can improve stretch marks. Um, however, there are some non-surgical laser type treatments that can help stretch marks, but they won't make them go away. So in my office, we use a pulse dye laser, uh, which is a very mild laser that treats the redness of stretch marks. And we, can, we find that that does help to reduce the redness, sometimes the depth of the stretch marks some, uh, in the end, you may get a 30 to 40% improvement. Uh, there, are F, there is an FDA-approved, more aggressive laser called a fractional laser that's approved for stretch marks. Uh, that's going to be more painful, more downtime, and you can probably get some nice smoothing of the stretch marks, but it won't make it go away. Truly, the only way to 100% eliminate stretch marks is to do a tummy tuck. Uh, but admittedly, a tummy tuck is a big operation. It can go anywhere from two and a half hours to five hours, depending on the surgeon. You get a permanent hip-to-hip -hip scar, usually a scar around your belly button, and you're talking a couple of weeks of downtime. Okay, so let's see if we've got some questions here. Yeah, because it's just showing here just a handful. I know that there's like 55 plus comments, but for some reason I can't bring them up. So... I apologize if I can't bring up your comments. Uh, here's a question that we got up. Okay, um, I'm gonna have my saline breast implants removed. What is your opinion on leaving the capsule behind? Uh, I heard it could be potentially dangerous, but risky to remove. This is something that's come up lately uh, because there are doctors that are talking about, a handful of doctors talking about on-block resection, or if you remove implants, removing the actual scar tissue with it. Um, it's definitely a controversial topic. I would. I would estimate that the vast majority of plastic surgeons would say that if that scar tissue left behind is thin, there's no real medical reason why it needs to be removed. However, if that scar tissue is thick, especially if it's calcified, if there's parts of it that just aren't technically normal and smooth and soft tissues, then that is something that would definitely potentially require removal. Um, especially with the saline implant, uh, the worry is, is there little bits of silicone left behind? in that capsule, it could be a problem. Uh, once again, there are people who fear that, but I know of no science to, to prove that that's something that really needs to be done. And the problem with removing 100% of that capsule, that scar tissue, is it could be a quite bloody and involved operation. So definitely I would encourage you, talk to your board certified plastic surgeon about it to get the most um, detail. Um, what happened to the lifestyle lift? Great question, this is from Cynthia. Uh, the Lifestyle Lift, you may have seen, there are lots of commercials on Saturday and Sunday mornings for this quote-unquote revolutionary mini facelift that got great results. So it really, in my opinion, was a sham. And they're out of business now, they went bankrupt. And basically what this is, is this is an operation that was described dozens and dozens of years ago. It's a facelift where you make a cut around the ears, you lift the skin up partially, put a couple of sutures in the muscle, pull the skin back, and suture it shut. It was done under a, a local anesthesia. Um, you had some patients that were fairly happy. I saw a lot of patients that were not. And the issue that I have with the lifestyle lift is number one, it's not meant uh, for everybody. And it's kind of a, they sold it as a one procedure for everybody type of thing, which really, um, really irked me. Um, I actually 
brought my uh, a, a, a relative of mine in to get a consultation. And I went kind of uh, with them. Uh, I had a baseball cap on. They didn't know who I was. And it was shocking what I ran into. I brought this person in with me who had a pretty heavy neck. And, and I actually showed this person's photo to a number of real plastic surgeons. And every single one of them said I would do a real facelift on her. Well, we met with this uh, patient coordinator person who basically did a hard sell on why she's going to benefit from this operation. It's the best thing ever. Never met the doctor. And they gave her this deal and said, if you sign up within the next two days, you're going to get $1,000 or something like that off. And over the next few days, we kept getting calls over and over again of, you got to sign up, you got to sign up. If you don't sign up now, then you're going to miss the special. And it was this hard sell. And my understanding is that they would have these salespeople. They're not even nurses, they're not doctors, but salespeople convince these uh, patients, unfortunately, that they need this operation, they need it right now, and it really is just not the way to practice good medicine. So uh, I'm very happy that the Lifestyle Lift is out of business. I have revised many of them. Uh, I had a patient with a horrible, uh, horrible experience with a staph infection afterwards, never saw her doctor in the hospital, after she had the surgery done. So be very wary of these bargain basement, quickie uh, plastic surgery clinics because you really do unfortunately get what you pay for. Okay, um, what about micro needling for stretch marks? Uh, micro needling is a great treatment. I had another question about that. Um, micro needling is one of the most popular treatments right now. And uh, it is great for kind of retexturing the skin. Uh, we talked about it, I think, a couple of shows ago, and it does work really well for improving the skin. Um, as far as stretch marks, um, I haven't seen great uh, a lot of changes with that. Although, if you do micro needle it deep enough, and if you combine it with some other things, uh, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, um, if you combine it maybe even with some laser treatments, and you could potentially get some nice improvement in stretch marks that way. But admittedly, that's not something that I have done a lot of treatment for um, in the past. Uh, this is from a good friend of mine, a nurse, Nancy Buffet. You have so many venues in your life, from surgeon, office doctor, writer. What is your favorite role in your life? If you could choose one, uh, my favorite role in my life is being a dad to my kids, and I've got kids that I love to death. I'm so proud of who they are. I purposely try to keep them um, out of the public eye. I don't put them on my Facebook, uh, my public Facebook page or anything like that um, because I don't want uh, them um, really feeling like they have to be anything but just regular people. And every once in a while, like tonight at dinner, my daughter asked me, Daddy, are you famous? And I said, no. And they asked, uh, uh, well, you're on TV. And I said, look, there are a lot of people on TV who aren't famous. So that's probably my best thing. Uh, my second best thing, uh, I do love being a doctor. I do love treating patients. And, uh, and this other stuff, doing the TV, doing the books and stuff, is just kind of filling everything else out. So I feel like I have a very rich life. I feel very blessed. Okay, so uh, Gwen asked me, uh, can you tell us your age? Your skin looks great. Uh, thank you so much. My age is 40, when was I born? 72, 40, 44, 44, turning 45 this year. Uh, and I do take uh, care of my skin. Um, all right, another question. What do you think about all therapy for the jowls? Uh, all therapy, if you're going to have a non-surgical skin tightening treatment, all therapy is about as aggressive as they get nowadays. And so uh, I do recommend patients, there's a doctor here in town. If you're from the Metro Detroit area, her name is Dr. Emily Levin. She is in Southfield. So I refer a lot of patients to her and her office for all therapy. All therapy basically is an ultrasound device that is FDA approved for tightening the skin of the face and of the forehead. And um, it's not, un it's not um, painless, so it does have some discomfort. Um, but short of surgery, right now, this is probably the best thing we have to tighten up the skin. Uh, the treatments can be uncomfortable. The treatments are expensive. And I don't, I don't have it, so I can't tell you exactly how much. My guess is it can run anywhere from $1,500 to even $3,000. And it can take several weeks, even up to a couple months, to see the results. But if you don't want to have surgery and you're okay having some discomfort, paying some money, and undergoing a more aggressive non-surgical treatment, then all therapy is a, uh, I think, a pretty reasonable option to, to consider. Um, another question, this is about food. Uh, what do you think about fruit and vegetable juicing? 
Uh, I am not a big fan of juicing, especially fruit juices. Uh, the reason why is because the fruit juice, basically you take all the fiber out and you just leave the vitamins and the sugar, okay? And that's the problem with juices. One of the worst juices to drink is apple juice because it's basically sugar water. And one of the big negatives, if you've read my book, The Age Fix, is sugar. Sugar is terrible. It causes these spikes of insulin that can cause chronic inflammation. Now, smoothies are a different story. With smoothies, if you add in, as long as you're not going to these smoothie places where they just have a bunch of powder and they add in ice cream and yogurt and stuff like that, that's not what I consider a smoothie. Smoothies are if you get um, real fruit, and, you can, and, and it's very good if you wanna get frozen fruit, uh, you can get that pretty inexpensive. You, you add that with some frozen greens like frozen kale or frozen spinach. Uh, make and, and add some water with that, maybe some almond milk, maybe a little bit of coconut milk. You blend that all together, throw in a little bit of, of uh, almond butter or peanut butter to it, and that's great because now you're getting the fiber, you're getting the nutrients, you're getting the fruits, you're getting the vegetables, even some protein with it. Uh, and if you add some coconut milk, almond milk can get some good fats too. Definitely a fan of smoothies, not a fan of juicing. Um, so Real quick, before we finish, I'm going to try to answer one more question after this, but um, next week uh, on Look, Live, and Be Better, we're going to change things up. We're going to switch to Thursday just for one week at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. We're going to switch it, and it's going to switch to an interview format. So instead of me teaching you and talking to you, it's going to be me talking to various experts, and those experts are going to tell you all about some of the coolest things in our field. We're going to start with a good friend of mine, Dr. Pimple Popper. If you've watched her videos, her disgusting but absolutely addicting videos online, we're going to interview her next week about her experience and what it's like being Dr. Pimple Popper and where that came from, basically. Uh, but in the ensuing weeks, we're going to talk about the miracle mindset. We'll talk about plastic surgery of the private parts. We'll talk about the hormone secret, the secret to, to feeling better, uh, improving your health. We'll talk about bone broth and how can, you can use that to lose weight. We'll talk about Beverly Hills lunchtime procedures. We'll get to the bottom of essential oils and all of these kind of hot topics in health, beauty, and plastic surgery. I'm so excited to start bringing this to you beginning next week. It'll be it'll turned into also a podcast format. So if you want to listen to it, these are going to be much longer. They'll be going anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes long. Uh, it'll be both video and it'll be audio. So you can watch the videos if you want or if you want to listen to it in your car or while you're doing work around the house. And hopefully you can learn a lot starting next week. Um, and we've got the, if you share and if you comment that you shared, we've got three, uh, six gifts total, uh, three groups of this. The Bright Next, a great anti-aging cream, very aggressive. So if you've got sensitive skin or thin skin, let me know. I don't want to send it to you because you may not tolerate it so well. But we combine that with a Foma Cleanse, a full size. This is huge. Uh, this is eight fluid ounces of Foma Cleanse, a great cleanser for your skin. We'll throw in a nice makeup skincare bag. Uh, and three people will get that. And three people will get a copy of my book, The Age Fix. This is how you can look 10 years younger without going under the knife. And we'll throw in a nice cell phone charger as well for three lucky people. So if you share, comment that you shared, we'll enter you into the drawing here over the next 48 hours, and hopefully you'll be somebody that can win. Okay, so one last question here. All right. If I've got a good one that's here, I'm happy to answer it. Otherwise, I've got some questions over here. Okay. Um, so here we go. Does face massage cause wrinkles and sagging skin? So you may have heard of face yoga, uh, and there are people doing face massage, there are people are doing exercises of the face. Um, not a big fan of those. I think the good thing about face yoga is not so much the weird faces that you make while you do it. That I think actually could cause more wrinkles. Botox works the opposite way. It's, it relaxes to smooth your face, so it doesn't make sense to me that strengthening the muscles of facial expression, if anything, is gonna make these wrinkles deeper. Um, but, but the relaxing parts of face yoga and the meditation parts of it, I think, are great for anti-aging. As far as massaging your skin, that is something that could definitely be good for your skin because uh, you can increase the circulation to the skin and even a gentle massage of your face, as long as your, skin, your, your hands <laughs> have been washed and you're not putting bacteria on your face, can actually help to exfoliate your skin. So there's good and bad. Facial exercise is bad. Facial massage, very good. 
So I want to thank you for all the questions. Uh, feel free to ask more questions. I'll try to answer some uh, as I can get to them. Remember next week, it's a different time. Thursday, February 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. We'll answer questions from Dr. Pimple Popper. This will be a pre-recorded segment, but we'll, uh, we'll have many more. Actually, next week, we're going to have some really good giveaways. If you've ever heard of the Instant Pots, I'm going to be giving some of those away, as well as skincare books. It's going to be a big giveaway bonanza next week to celebrate the launch of the Look, Live, and Be Better audio and video podcast. So I'll see you next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for all the great questions and for watching. Have a good evening. I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's holistic plastic surgeon. This is Look, Live, and Be Better.